and welcome back to another Foodie Friday Cook With Me video. In today's video, we are going to be wrapping up our quick and easy uh, weeknight meals. Tonight, we're gonna be making one of my family's favorites. It is my father-in-law's recipe for an easy and quick chili con carne, which is basically just a mostly meat chili. There are some beans, but it is mostly meat, so if your family is like mine and doesn't love a ton of beans, then this is the chili for you. Plus, it's super duper easy on a busy weeknight, especially ones like now where it's slowly starting to turn into fall. We're also going to be making a delicious cornbread, a sweet cornbread that again is super easy and simple, and finally, we're gonna be making a delicious cake, and we might make a margarita tonight. I'm not 100% sure, we'll see. This has been my first week back to school. I'm battling some serious allergies right now. Um, it has just been a little bit crazy around here, but I'm super excited to be cooking for you tonight. It's a little bit later than I normally cook, so I've actually got my lights on, so please forgive me if there are shadows. It's a little bit crazy tonight, but you know what, this is, authentic my friends this is a real crazy cook with me night my husband just left with my three boys to go to soccer my daughter has to go to dance in about an hour and a half and i gotta get to cooking so let's get started so normally on a crazy busy weeknight i would not be making a cake however we do need a little bit extra for this video i didn't just want to make the chili and the cornbread usually in my house weeknights are not dessert nights we save those for friday and saturday and typically Sunday, <laughs> but desserts are usually safe for the weekend. But tonight is special because I wanted to make sure I added a dessert. I haven't done a dessert in a few videos, so I wanna make sure I toss that in. So tonight we are making a delicious lemon raspberry cake, excuse me. It is delicious. It has a creamy uh, cream cheese frosting. It is absolutely delicious. The cake is moist and yummy and we're gonna go ahead and get that started before we get started on our cornbread. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our cake pans. So typically you would use some butter and some flour. However, I was running pretty low on butter. I had what I needed for my recipes. So I just sprayed mine with Pam and then I'm still going to flour them. This is so that your uh, cake batter doesn't stick to your cake pans. I'm using eight inch cake pans today. Uh, you can you know, do your cake however you want. This is what the recipe calls for. This is how I have made it um, in the past. I have made this recipe two other times. It is a pretty lengthy process, so this isn't one I do like regularly, but I was really craving it. The kids were really craving it. It's absolutely delicious, especially in the morning with a cup of coffee. I know that sounds crazy. Just give it a try. If you are the after dinner cup of coffee kind of person, which I definitely can be, this is excellent with a cup of coffee. It just lends itself to that so well. So if you have never done this process to prepare your baking dishes, you're just super, super easy. Just put in some Pam and then you're going to put in a little bit of flour and then um, move it around so your whole pan is covered. Next up, we're gonna get started with our batter. So the first thing that it calls for is nine tablespoons of butter. For whatever reason, I was struggling to count today. I was so tired, you guys. It Getting back into the groove of school is so rough, especially the very beginning of school. It's so busy. I've been on the phone with families left and right as their students prepare to come back to school. We have a lot of kids returning from homeschool from last year, and it's just been really, really busy, so I'm so tired. But Next up, you're going to zest an entire lemon into your batter. So zesting is super easy. This zester I actually purchased at the Dollar Tree. You can get fancier ones, but you just kind of rub your uh, fruit all across the zester very lightly until you uh, remove the very top layer of your fruit. Make sure that you've washed it really good before you do that because you are using the very outside of it. So make sure you wash it really well. Next up, we're going to add in a cup of sugar there, and then we're going to cream this together. Now, my butter had not been, uh, it wasn't soft enough. It wasn't sitting out of the fridge long enough, and so it's kind of crumbling here. That's what you're seeing. 
butter crumbling is is normal at when you're first getting started it shouldn't crumble this much if it's softened properly mine was not so it did take me a little bit of extra time to get it to the cream section or to the cream consistency but we got there <laughs> Just let your butter soften a lot more than mine. It wasn't prepared. So here I am using this tiny spatula from William Sonoma to uh, scrape all of that uh, butter and sugar mixture out. This is also the time that I would have added in the vanilla, but I forgot. I do end up adding it later, but um, you want to add it in around this time, either now or when you're adding in your eggs which is coming next. Make sure you're scraping your bowl really well so that way you're keeping all of your ingredients. Baking is about getting everything, you know, to the right measurements. It's not like cooking where you can kind of fib it up. So um, next up, you're gonna add your eggs. So you need three eggs. The yolk goes into your batter and then you're gonna keep the egg white separate because we're going to beat that. Um, so make sure that you're separating your eggs. That's what I'm doing here. There's lots of different ways to separate your eggs. I do it the old school fashioned way that I learned in home ec in seventh grade. Um, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't always work like there where I have to scrape it out of my egg whites, but you can separate your eggs, whatever works for you in whatever way. Um, but again, we're going to beat this into a nice creamy consistency. It's going to be a nice pale yellow color. And you'll want to add in that vanilla if you haven't already. Um, super duper easy. And now that wet part of our batter is ready to go. Now we're going to uh, froth up these eggs. This is our egg whites. You're going to put your mixer on as high as you can. And you're just going to beat this until you get soft peaks. So I completely sped this up and cut out a huge portion in the middle. But this takes a few minutes, so just prepare to have your arm go in there for a minute. It probably takes two to three minutes um, to get it, you know, to the right consistency where it's got some soft peaks like I'm showing you there. You don't want to overmix it because that can make your egg whites tough, but um, just enough where you're getting those soft peaks. Next up, we're going to get our flour. So the recipe calls for, I believe, two cups of flour. Check the recipe. Don't quote me. Just check it. But I believe it's two cups. Um, I'm using a half a cup scoop here. So that's why. That's what fits in my jar. Um, and then you're also going to add in baking powder. I don't remember exactly how much. Maybe a teaspoon or two. Let's see. That looks like uh either a teaspoon or two i don't know if that's a half teaspoon i think it's a half teaspoon and then a teaspoon of salt which i threw in whatever i had left because it was almost gone and then you need some baking soda and then we're going to use the whisk to just combine all of those dry ingredients really well and it kind of acts as like a sifter um, i do believe it calls for sifting i don't ever do that i just use the whisk and then you're going to add in your yogurt. So the recipe calls for either plain or vanilla yogurt. The Siggy's vanilla yogurt, I think it's vanilla Greek yogurt, you can see the vanilla bean in it. It's delicious. It's really thick and creamy, and it's got just the right amount of tang. So that's always what I use. Um, but you can use, you know, whatever works for you. You're going to mix that in, and now we're going to alternate between our dry ingredients and our... Um, our wet ingredients the only wet ingredient we have left is our egg whites so this uh, cake batter is pretty thick um, it's not very uh, it's not like a cake batter you would make from a box that you would just pour into the cake pan this one's pretty pretty dry pretty thick um, so just keep that in mind when you're stirring in and you're folding in your egg whites. Like it's it's gonna be pretty thick um, and that's okay. It turns out absolutely delicious. The yogurt in it keeps it really moist, I promise. Um, it just is gonna look a little bit, you know, different than um, cake mixes that you're used to seeing perhaps. So just keep an eye on that uh, and get all of your ingredients combined. And then we're going to move into adding in our raspberries. So this cake is a lemon raspberry cake, but if you prefer something else, um, I think this cake would also be delicious with a lemon raspberry. I'm sorry, a blueberry lemon. I make a really delicious lemon blueberry cookie. It's a recipe that I got from, I think it was Giada. Um, and lemon and blueberry together is fantastic. So if you're not a big raspberry fan, make this cake, but do it with blueberries and it'll be just as delicious, I promise. So 
We're gonna go ahead and add in our raspberries. Now you wanna use frozen fruit for this recipe. That keeps your fruit from falling apart as you're stirring it into your batter. Um, as you can see here, these raspberries have like the little raspberry pieces. That definitely is going to turn my batter um, red pretty quickly. However, if you can try to avoid those little pieces, that might keep your batter, you know, white as long as you can. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the flavor of your batter at all. So now you're going to divide your batter the best that you can into your two cake pans. Uh, mine definitely were not even. One of my cakes got a little bit bigger than the other but it's no big deal. You're also going to see this in real life right here. So I do miss the cake pan uh, for a second and I have to scoop it off and put it back in, but that's real life guys. These videos are like really me cooking for my family. It's not, you know, studio or I'm, this is real life. I'm really cooking these, this food for my family. So you're going to see those mistakes sometimes and that's okay. Uh, you'll also see later that one of my cakes don't, or one of, yeah, one of my cakes don't uh, fully rise and that's okay too. No big deal. So you're just going to put your cake batter into your cake pan and then you're going to spread it out. Now, as you can see here, this cake batter is definitely more like a scone. Like it's definitely really, really thick. But when it bakes, it does um, really soften up and it, it's very, very moist. But uh, spread it around to the best of your ability and make sure that you get it as even as you possibly can. You could weigh it out if you want to, if that's important to you. That was not important to me. Um, you know, it was about the taste, not the presentation, but uh, it really does turn out delicious. So spread this out, get it all ready. Then you're gonna pop it in the oven you're gonna put your oven to uh, 350 degrees and you're gonna bake it for about 30 minutes um, unless one side is bigger than the other like mine and you might need to leave it in for a couple extra minutes but pop it in there and it'll be ready to go in no time Okay, so we've got our cake in the oven, um, and now we're gonna get started on our cornbread. So this is the most delicious cornbread you will ever have. You'll never go back to any other recipe, I promise you. The first time I tried this recipe was probably 10 years ago. Uh, it was suggested to me from a friend of mine at work, and I have never gone back. So here's the secret, yellow cake mix. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what? But yellow cake mix is the secret to the best, sweetest, most moist uh, cornbread you will ever have. So the way that this recipe goes is you use one box of yellow cake mix and two boxes of the Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. So I'm holding one here, I have another over there, but this is your magic combination to make the most delicious cornbread. Now, the chili con carne that we're making today is a little bit on the sweeter side. It's absolutely delicious, and you pour it over the cornbread. It is to die for. So we're gonna get this made so we can get this in the oven, and then we're gonna get started on our chili. Now, this recipe is going to make a sweeter cake-like cornbread. So if you are not a big fan of sweet cornbread, definitely do not try this recipe. Just follow the normal recipe, but this one is going to make your um, cornbread really fluffy and cake-like, and my family loves it. In fact, my husband actually said to me um, the day that we ate this, he said, can you make this for my birthday cake instead? <laughs> instead of a cake, it was so funny. Um, but you're basically just going to mix your two dry ingredients together. So your box of cake mix, your two boxes of Jiffy uh, cornbread mix, and then you're going to um, add in all of the ingredients that you would on the back of both of those boxes. So I'm starting now by adding the ingredients that the cake mix calls for, and then I'll add in the ingredients that the um, two boxes of cornbread calls for. You'll mix that all together, and then you'll get that into a nine by 13 dish. My nine by 13 dish, I only have one, and it's actually in my fridge because we made that TikTok sushi bake. Um, so it's in my fridge right now. But um, so I used a different casserole dish. That definitely increased my baking time because it wasn't as thin, it wasn't at such a thin layer. 
uh, but it does call for a 9 by 13 dish. So that'll make it bake really quickly, probably in about 30 minutes. Now it's finally time for us to get started with our chili. So this chili is a little bit different. Again, it's a little bit on the sweeter side, uh, but we're gonna get started with our vegetables. So you're going to need one um, onion, and I'm just using a regular onion here, but you can use whatever kind of onion you prefer. This I believe is a yellow onion. And then you're also going to need two bell peppers. The recipe tastes the best if you avoid the green peppers. Um, the red and yellow really do give it the most delicious flavor, but if you really like the flavor of a green bell pepper, it's pretty strong. If you like that flavor, definitely toss that in. It'll be good too. So go ahead and dice up all of your vegetables uh, really small. They do make all kinds of fun tools to help you dice up your vegetables, like little choppers and things like that. Uh, but this, I like it the good old fashioned way. I really enjoy chopping and using a knife. So I just do it the old way um, as often as I can. Um, my oldest son really loves to use the knife too. So he's been teaching himself how to do that. Um, and it really does help. One thing I want to point out in these shots is my cutting board. So my wooden cutting board got wet and it was wet for a long time and it warped the shape of my cutting board. So as you can see, it's not laying flat on the counter and it just keeps kind of sliding all over the place and it was driving me insane like absolutely insane so I'm definitely going to be getting a new one in fact I might go look for one today um, because I love cutting on a wooden cutting board but oh my gosh I was so disappointed I don't remember how it got wet I think it got put in the sink um, and then it just kind of sat there I, I don't remember how it got in the sink I definitely didn't put it in the sink but it got put in the sink nonetheless and um, it sat in the water and it, the wood, you know, the porous wood just kind of absorbed and now it's so warped, but that's okay. I'm going to get a new one. I bought it at Home Goods. There, it wasn't terribly expensive. It was like $25. I'll get another one, but that is uh, going to drive me bananas. <laughs> it drove me crazy while I did it. it. drove me crazy while I was editing and it's driving me crazy now while I'm adding this voiceover. So it's probably driving you crazy, uh, but just know my plan is to get a new one. <laughs> So again, just dice up all of your vegetables really, really small, and then we'll take them over to the stove here in just a little bit, and we'll let them sweat and get really, really sweet before adding in our ground beef.
before I started working on the stove, I went ahead and checked my cake. The one cake was definitely done and ready to go. However, the other cake was definitely not. It was a little bit thicker than this one. So we're gonna let that one sit there in the oven for a little while longer. Meanwhile, I'm grabbing uh, one of my large stock pots and adding uh, probably the equivalent of maybe a half a tablespoon of oil. These pans that I use, they're by Caraway. I get asked about them a lot. They are non-stick, so you really don't need a lot of oil or butter or anything. Um, but I do just add a little bit because it helps to saute my vegetables. So add your diced vegetables into your pot. Let those saute and sweat. They sweat for probably about five minutes. And then I'm going to add in my ground beef. So I'm using about a pound and a half of ground beef today. Um, I wish that I would have doubled this recipe because everybody in my family really loves it. And it's so good like a day or two later. The leftovers are just fantastic so i wish i would have made more i also could have froze it but it's fine this is what i did <laughs> looking back i'll probably make a double batch next time but once your uh, meat is in just go ahead and break it up as small as you possibly can and you're going to mix it in with those sauteed vegetables and just let this cook now you're going to want to use um, a pretty low fat beef uh, i use a 96 4 um, because I, I didn't want to have to worry about draining it. So it's up to you, but you want to keep it, you know, as, as low, uh, fat as possible. So go ahead and add in, uh, about a teaspoon or so of chili powder. I do end up going back and adding more, but I always start with a little and add in more later because I can't take it back out. So Next up, we're gonna add in our beans. So for this recipe, we are using pork and beans. You're gonna need one large can and then one of the small cans. Um, if you don't like a lot of beans, you can just use the one can, but really you wanna use the one large and one small. And this just gives it a very unique flavor. It's unlike any other chili I've ever had. I told you this is my father-in-law's recipe. I'm not supposed to share it, so keep it a secret. But it's absolutely delicious. It, it's such an interesting, um, sweet chili that's so different from any other chili I've ever had. So next up, we're going to add some tomato uh, soup. So add one can first, mix that in, and give it a taste and see how you like it. If you feel like it needs some more, you can add another half a can or another whole can uh, but it's up to you on what you like. I like it with the two cans, so I'm going to put two full cans of the tomato soup in, but it's going to be up to you and what flavor you like. So taste it first and see if you like it, and then you can add more. Another thing that I add in, this is it for this recipe. However, I add in a few dashes of uh, um, garlic powder. My family really loves garlic, so we add a little bit of garlic in there, but my father-in-law's recipe does not call for it, so you can try it without it, see if you like it, add it if you think it's necessary. Next up, we're gonna work on the icing for our cake. So this recipe calls for just a regular lemon buttercream. We like a uh, cream cheese frosting on this cake, so that's what I am making instead. So to make the frosting, I am doing one stick of butter and one eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. And then we're gonna add in five cups of powdered sugar. Now this did give us a ton of frosting and my family does not love a ton of frosting on the cake. So I really put a very, very thin layer in between my two um, cakes. And then I did put you know a pretty substantial amount on the outside but this makes a lot of frosting. So if you like a lot of frosting, this is your way to get all of that frosting that you want. Um, however, if you don't like a ton of frosting, you don't have to use all of it. We definitely did not. You're gonna grab that lemon that you zested, cut it in half. I'm pulling out some of the seeds and then I'm gonna use my uh, lemon squeezer right here and or lemon juicer, lemon squeezer, that's not a thing. It's a lemon juicer. <laughs> And we're going to juice the whole lemon into our frosting. Now, if you don't like it super tangy, you can do just one, but we're doing both. Um, and I think you could also add in a little bit of vanilla if you wanted to. I did not. Um, the other trick that I do for my frosting is I always use salted butter because I just think having that little bit of salt with all that sweet really does balance out the flavor. So 
Go ahead and mix that up until your frosting is combined. It is going to be a little bit thicker. This is not a light and fluffy buttercream, um, but you could make it, it. I think it calls for a light and fluffy buttercream, but we like it with the cream cheese. So it's up to you on what you want to do. So I'm starting with the cake that has that big dent in the middle there and I'm just adding in a little bit of the frosting and then adding in a very, very thin layer here in between the two cakes, literally just enough to coat the cake. Um, but I, I normally, if it was just me making this cake for like a crowd and not my family, I would have added more in, in between because definitely calls for it. But my family doesn't like a ton of the frosting. So adding in a generous amount here to the top and I'm just spreading it around. I am using a cake turntable. You can find these at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, on Amazon, pretty much anywhere. They're very, very affordable for just a very cheap, you know, use at home as a mom kind of cake turntable. It's definitely not a professional one by any sense of the means, but it gets the job done. So just going to frost this cake really quickly, very, very uh, generously and nonchalantly. This is not, uh, you know, meant to look fancy. It's just meant to taste delicious. So once I have my cake frosted, I'm using a spatula to add it onto my cake stand here. This cake stand is my favorite. I purchased this at Ikea. It lives on my countertop because I think it's stunning. I love the scalloped edge. Uh, it's so very pretty. So now I'm just adding in a little bit of those leftover frozen raspberries to the top that have now uh, defrosted. They're nice and soft and our cake is done and it is almost time to eat. I am getting so excited. So lastly, we're gonna go ahead and cut our cornbread. So our cornbread is done. I'm going ahead and cutting it here into, uh, you know, some squares, I don't know, some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces, depends on what you like. And then I'm using uh, my knife here, which wasn't working very well, so I ended up grabbing a little tiny spatula that I purchased from the Pampered Chef. I use it actually for cookies when I bake cookies, but um, just using that to pull out our cornbread here, I'm gonna get it all buttered up, and then we're gonna head outside to the back deck to eat. My mouth is watering now, just like it was when I was cooking all of this. I cannot wait to eat this, and I hope you guys give this a try. It is such a delicious and easy weeknight fall meal. Dinner is done and I am ready to eat. I'm sitting outside on the back deck. It is just a gorgeous night in late summer, early fall. And we're gonna go ahead and give our chili a try here. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. And of course I can't leave you hanging with the dessert. So let's go ahead and give our cake a try here looks incredible definitely want to make sure I get a little bit of everything in my bite mm. it's tangy and sweet and that yogurt gives it just a little bit extra tang and then all that lemon in our frosting the lemon zest inside of our cake just absolutely delicious and so refreshing Mm. All right, my friends, that brings us to the end of another Foodie Friday Cook With Me video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm excited to go sit down and enjoy this dinner with my family. We're going to have a movie night, and I'm going to go put on my jams and make that margarita. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And until the next one, my friends, happy eating. Bye. Bye.